Shalom, everyone. We are continuing our Lima of Sefer Yirmiyot. We're up to Perak Lamed Beis. And here we have a prophecy that is dated. Remember, we've already read about the Galut of the Cheresh and the Masker, the Tomidei Chachamim, that was 11 years before the Chorban, and that involved the uh, deposing of Melech Yehoyachin, and he was replaced by his uncle, Tzidkiyahu, who was a son of the righteous king, Yoshiyahu. And uh, Tzidkiyo rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar, and as a result, Nebuchadnezzar leads a huge army to besiege Jerusalem, eventually resulting in the 11th year of Tzidkiyo's reign, the Chorban, Beis Hamikdash, and the Golos. And this Nebuah is dated in the 10th year of Tzidkiyo's reign, uh, in other words, uh, one year before the Chorban Beis Hamikdash, right? So we're dealing with right before the Chorban Beis Hamikdash. Hadavor Shehayo Miyo Mies Hashem. The following is a prophecy that came to your Miyo from Akadish Borhu, Bashana Siris, the tenth year of Sidkiyahu Melech Yehuda, one year before the Chorban. He Hashana Shimona Esrei Shana Linavuchat Retzar. So the tenth year of Sidkiyahu is the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign. Again, he is referred to uh, as Nebuchadnezzar, which is an alternative pronunciation throughout the book of Yirmiyahu. And what was happening in the tenth year? So Pasuk Beis tells us, V'yaz chel melech bavel tsarim al Yerushalayim. The armies of the king of Babylonia are laying siege against Yerushalayim because Sidkiyahu, against the command of the Navi Yirmiyahu, who said not to rebel, rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar. And where is Yirmiyahu during this time? Yirmiyahu Hanavi Haya Kalu Bechatser Hamatara Asher Beis Melech Yehuda. Yirmiyahu, the Navi of Hashem, is actually in prison. He was thrown into prison for undermining the confidence of the people by telling them that they will not be able to win against Babel. So he was denounced as a traitor, as a false prophet, and he was thrown into prison, which uh, in the Lushan of the Pasuk is called Chatzer Hamatara. So Yermio is given this prophetic revelation while he is in prison. And Pasuk Gimel tells us, why is he in prison? Asher kelao tzidkiyo melech Yehuda lemor. He was thrown into prison by tzidkiyo melech Yehuda, who said, Madua ata niba lemor kayamar Hashem, hineni no sein esoir hazais. Biyad Melech Bavel Ulechada. You, Yermio, are giving a prophecy in the name of Hashem that the city of Yerushalayim will be conquered by the king of Babylon. And not only that, but Vitzitkiyo, Melech Yehuda, Lo Yimolech Miyadakatim, and Sitkiyo will not be able to escape. Kihonasoni Nasein Biyad Melech Bavel. He will be arrested, taken into custody by the king of Bavel. Again, we'll see the story, the details of the story later on. V'diber piv in piv, and uh, his mouth will speak mouth to mouth with Nebuchadnezzar. V'einav es einav tirena, and his eyes shall see the eyes of Nebuchadnezzar. Now, Lemaisa, what this is saying is that Sidkiyo put Yirmiyo in prison. Because Yermio gave a prophecy of destruction and defeat, not only of the city and not only of the Beis Hamikdash, but of Sidkiyo personally, therefore, he Yermio is considered a traitor, and therefore he was put in prison. And the conclusion of, of Yermio's prophecy, for which he was put in prison, this is not the prophecy of this chapter. This is simply reviewing. Why Yermio is in prison? Ubavel Yolech is Sidkiyo. Sidkiyo will be taken to Bavel, Visham Yiya, and he will remain in Bavel at Pakdioso until I remember him, which actually means, Rashi says, death, 
because after all, Sidkio never came back, he died in Bavel. Num Hashem, Kisi Lachamu Esakastim, and your message was, if you try to fight the Babylonians, Lo Tatzlichu. Now, there is a little bit of a question, because the Pasuk here says that the Nevuah was, your mouth will speak to Nebuchadnezzar, and your eyes will see Nebuchadnezzar, and yet we are told that Nebuchadnezzar, in fact, poked out Sidkiyahu's eyes, and Sidkiyahu was not killed by Nebuchadnezzar, he died naturally in Bavel, but Sidkiyahu died blind, and again, we'll go over that story later on, so what does it mean his eyes will see the eyes. Again, the Pashtus is, he will see Nebuchadnezzar and he will then be blinded. So these first few psukim are the earlier prophecies of Yermio which got him in prison in the Chatzar HaMatara. He was accused of being a traitor. He was accused of uh, undermining confidence in their Nitzachon. The other prophets who are false prophets, B'Shem Hashem, are saying, God loves you, God will protect you, God will never allow the Babylonians to defeat you or destroy the Beis HaMikdash. And they were the false prophets. But Yermio is the one that's being accused of that, and he's thrown in Chatzar and Matara. So, this is simply, this is not the prophecy of this chapter. This is simply explaining why Yermio is in Chatzar HaMatara. Now that we know why he is in the Chatzar HaMatara, we now have the prophecy that Hashem gave him that Yermio is writing down many years later, perhaps even after the Chorban. And Pasuk Vav says, Vayomer Yermiyahu so years later, he's saying, while I was in prison, the word of God came to me in the following way. Hine, Chanamel ben Shalom, Dotcha, Boa Elecha Lemar, Kene Lecha Es Sadi Asherba Nasos, Ki Lecha Mishpat Hagula Liknos. Hashem is telling him, you are going to have a pris- a visitor to your prison. Apparently, uh, people can visit the prisoners. And this visitor is Hanamel ben Shalom, who is your uncle. And he will come to you. And he owns a field in Anasos, which is your uh, city in Eretz Binyamin. And he is going to sell that field because he doesn't have money. And there is uh, a mitzvah in the Torah that when one sells a field that he inherited, there is a mitzvah on the relatives to redeem the field. That means either to buy it from the purchaser to keep the field in the family, or even to buy it from the owner. So it never leaves the family. It remains in the family. This is the mitzvah of Geula, and Hanano ben Shalom has an ancestral field. Uh, and he's going to go to you and say, I have to sell it, I want you to buy it, because you are the closest relative and you have the law of Geula, the law of redemption. So Hashem tells him this is going to happen. And Yermio, as he's writing this up, tells us this indeed happened. Vayavo Eli Hanamel ben Dodi, Kidvar Hashem, Hanamel, yeah, I'm sorry, Hanamel was not his uncle, Hanamel was his cousin. Hanamel ben Shalom, Shalom is the dote, so Hanamel is the cousin. Hanamel, who is the son of my uncle, came, Kidvar Hashem, as Hashem predicted, El Chatzera Matara, to the prison, Vayomer Eli, and he said, Kenei no es sadi asher banasos, asher beretz benyamin, please purchase my field, in Anosos, in the land of Binyamin, ki lecha mishpat ha-yirusha u-lecha ha-geula, because you are the closest heir and the closest relative, and you have a mitzvah to redeem the field, to keep it within the mishpacha. And Yermio said, v'aida, I knew, ki devar Hashem hu, that this was a divine revelation, because Hashem told me it would happen, and it did happen. So this must be directly from Hashem. And Yermio saw this as a sign 
from heaven that he is supposed to buy the field. Again, for reasons I'm not clear, HaKadosh Baruch Hu did not tell him directly that he should buy the field. But Yirmiyo says, since Hashem told me my cousin would be coming, and my cousin did come with that proposal, I saw this by implication. Now again, I don't know why Hashem is speaking by implication. I saw this by implication that I should buy the field. So Yirmiyo is in prison, but apparently he still has access to his money. I bought the field from Chanamel, the son of my uncle, in Anasos. So this was a lot cheaper than Ma'aras HaMachpelah. Ma'aras HaMachpelah cost Avram 400 shekel. But here, uh, the field was sold for a measly seven shkalim. The Asara Kesef and ten smaller pieces of silver. Now again, you have to understand, the real estate market in Yerushalayim or in Eretz Yehuda is essentially down to zero because the Babylonians are on the verge of destroying that whole place. Who would even put down any money for a field which they're likely to lose and have that field destroyed? That's really why fields were going for a very, very small amount of money, and Yermio was able to buy the field for seven shekel of silver and ten smaller silver pieces. And Yermio wanted to make it official. He wanted to have a deed. For Echto Basefer, we prepared a document, a star, for Echtom. And I signed it. Now, actually, technically, this does not mean he signed it. The signature of a buyer on a deed is uh, doesn't mean anything. Uh, you have to have two Adem who sign on a star. So he says he saw the echtom va'aid Adem. So the way we interpret it is, I caused the signatures of two Adem who are made that Chanamel is selling me the field. V'yashkol ha'kesef b'mosnayim, and I weighed the silver on a scale to be sure it was an exact weight. I wasn't giving less than the weight of seven shkolim, because in those days the value of a coin was based on its silver content. So if it didn't have the weight of seven shekel, it was not seven shekel. V'ekach es sefer hamikna. And I took, because again, the way a star works, if I sell you property by a deed, the mocher gives the lokeach the star. So Yermio says, I took the document of acquisition, et hechosum, the part that was signed by witnesses, ha mitzvah and the part, now again, this is an unusual phrase, mitzvah and chukim literally means the commandments and the laws. But in this context, again, it's a little bit of a difficult phrase to exactly translate. But in this context, it basically means the standard formulary language for the transfer of ownership. Even today, deeds, whether they're secular deeds or shtarais in halacha, there's a certain standard nusach. Yeah, the star would be kosher even without the standard nusach, but there tended to be a certain formality. So there was mitzvah v'chukim, the standard clauses, v'yet ha'galoi, and the part that is revealed. So this is an interesting uh, issue. What is galoi? So the Malbim understands it, based on a Gemara in Bava Basra, that they would actually write a deed in two ways. They would write a deed, a star. And then they would fold it up and sew it shut. So it would be a closed document. And then they would continue to write the same star in an open way. That's called galoi. And this was a security device that in the event there was some claim that somebody changed a clause in the document, 
like for example, enlarging the acreage from one acre to ten acre, putting in a zero, they could then cut open the sealed part of the document and they could compare the galoi with that which was uh, covered up. And that would be a way that would prevent forgery because there was part of the star that could not be opened up except under the supervision of based and, and the like. So Yumiyo is making the point that I really made this a very formalistic sale. There was a star, there was Adem, the money was weighed, there was the regular part of the star and there was the that was sealed up, and the official part of the star that was sealed up, and then there was a part of the star that was not sealed up for um, anti uh, as a security device. And then Yermio said, after I received the star from my cousin Hanamel, for attain as a sefer hamikna, I gave the document of acquisition, the star, the deed, El Baruch ben Neria ben Machseya. This is Yermio's faithful disciple, Baruch ben Neria ben Machseya, Lienei Hanamel Dodi, and I gave it in the in front of Hanamel. Now here it says Hanamel, my uncle, Lachar Hanamel is his cousin. But Dodi, of course, can mean both uncle and it can also mean friend. So Rashi himself has a little bit of a kasha. Really, it should have been Ben Dodi. And the star was delivered to Baruch ben Uria in front of the Adam as well. In front of all of the people in the prison, this may be other prisoners. And I commanded Baruch, I gave Baruch my Talmud, the following instructions. Kai Amar Hashem This is the message of God. Now the Emma says, we don't find that Hashem told him what he's now saying, B'Shem Hashem. So we're not sure. Are we to assume that Hashem gave him these words? Or is he extrapolating from Hashem's indicator that he should buy the field that he should take the following steps? So it's not clear. Normally, Kai Amar Hashem means Hashem actually told him this but we have no other record of Hashem telling him this other than what he's telling Baruch right now. Take these documents, etachasum, the part of the documents signed by witnesses, as Sefer HaGaloyaz and the part that's revealed. Unesatam bichli chores leman yamdu yomim rabim. Put it in an earthenware jar which will preserve the parchment from deterioration. To this day, the Gemara learns out of here that uh, it's covered when you put a Sefer Torah in Geniza and you eventually bury it, it should be put in a Klicheres so it won't disintegrate because causing a tyra to disintegrate is a bizayin of the Sefer tyra, And the raya is that Baruch was told by Yirmiyahu to place the Sefer Hamikna, the document of acquisition, in a klichares, that it shouldn't deteriorate. Because once again, here's the point. The Yidden are going to be in Golos. This is one year before the Chorban. Yermio is buying a field. So first of all, what type of shtus is it to even buy a field? But Yermio is saying, I am doing a Misa that is showing there will be a Geula. In 70 years, we will be able to come back to Eretz Israel. And when we come back to Eretz Israel, we will plant fields and vineyards and buildings and houses. <clears throat> and therefore, I'm not just doing a game, doing a mitzvah to buy a field that I'm going to lose. I am confident in my emuna b'bias hagayal, although it's not Mashiach, but even the b'sayra of after 70 years, I am confident that there will be a shivat tzion, a return to Zion, and therefore, I want my deeds to be around 70 years from now. 
so I can unearth it and show that I'm the owner. This is a gesture, this is a pu'ula, this is a maisa that on one hand gives people the message we're going to be gone for a while but it gives them the chizuk that there's going to be a return. Kikai amar Hashem tzvakos alukei Yisrael o yikanu batim v'sadai suchramim b'yeretz hazais there will be a time when once again people will buy houses and fields and vineyards. Right? So you understand the impact of this on the audience. They see this prophet buying a field shortly before the devastating Chorban and Golas and during a siege of Yerushalayim. And they realize he is giving them a message of hope. And then Pasuk Tesayin says, V'espalel al Hashem acharei titi as a sefer amikta al baruch ben riel emar. And after I gave baruch the sefer amikta, the document of, accusi- uh, of acquisition, I then prayed to Hashem. So Yirmiyahu is writing this much later, after the Chorvan. Aha, Hashem alokim. Alas, woe is me. Hine ata sisa sa shamayim v'yasa'aretz. You are the creator of heaven and earth. With your infinite power, your outstretched arm, there is nothing that is beyond you. You, Hashem, can do everything. You are omnipotent. You do chesed to thousands of people, actually thousands of generations. As the Aserah Zedibro says, Hashem may reward a mitzvah for up to 2,000 generations. And then you will also punish, visit the sins of the fathers on the sons. As again, this is from the Aserah Sadibras, and as Rashi points out in the name of Chazal, uh, if the children do not follow the evil deeds of their parents, then they will not be punished for those evil deeds. But if their ochsin then pokeid avain avas albanim until the fourth generation. So the Mida Taiva of Hashem, Hashem rewards mitzvahs until the 2,000th generation. For Rishos, he punishes Averis up to the 4th generation. So this is the source of the well-known Chazal, that Hashem's Mida Taiva uh, is 500 times the Midas Paraniyas, and that is the ratio of 2,000 to 4. Uh, I also uh, want to Oh, okay. Yeah, then it goes right, and then it's Hakel, Hagadal, Hagibor. You, Hashem, are Gadal and Gibor. Hashem Tzavakos Shemo. And you are the Lord of hosts. The hosts are all of the different entities and creations in the universe, heaven and earth. So, you, Hashem, are omnipotent. The chesed you give for those who do good can go until 2,000 generations. And you punish until the fourth generation. And you are Godol and Gibor. So Rashi points out, again from the Gemara, Seches Yuma, that here Hashem is described as Godol and Gibor, but we don't call him Naira. We don't call him awesome or awe-inspiring. And the Gemara in Yuma says, because Hashem is not showing his awesomeness if he's letting the Goyim be misgaber against Yerushalayim. So at this point, the aspect of Naira is Mechusa. And that is why it is only Hakel Hagado Hagibor. And then Yermio goes on and he praises Hashem, and we'll see what he's doing, what he's praying for. Gadayel ha'etza. You are great in the wisdom of whatever you do. Varav ha'alila. And great in the actions that you do to keep the universe alive. Asher e'necha pekuchais al b'nei adam. Your eyes are open. You see everything that people do. Including their thoughts. Laseis la'ish kidrachav. To give each person 
what they deserve according to their ways, for good or for bad. V'chifari malalav, and give them the fruits of their deeds. Asher samta oso sumosim v'yaretz Mitzrayim ad yomazah. And in Mitzrayim you did miracles and signs that are still being talked about to this very day. Ubi Yisrael, Ubi Adam. And these were miracles that made the Jewish people realize God. And even the rest of the nations, Adam. Vatas Hashem, and you made for yourself the greatness of your name, Kayom Azah, that is still known to this very day. And you took your people out of Mitzrayim with signs and with wonders with a strong hand an outstretched arm this is again paraphrasing the Torah with great awesome fear and you brought these Yidin to this land that you had sworn to their forefathers Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, Lasei Slahem, Eretz, Zavas, Chalav, Udvash. Again, Yermiyah was using all the Lashaynas of the Torah. A land that is flowing with milk and honey. Honey here means date honey. But what happened? So, Baruch Hashem, you did miracles for them. You took us out of Mitzrayim. You made a Kiddush Hashem. You showed your awesomeness that even the Yumas Ha'elam recognized it. But what happened? He's recapping the history. Vaya Vayu. And they came. Vayirshu osah, and they inherited the land. V'lo yishamu b'kaylacha, they did not listen to your voice. Uvaseirascha lehalacha, they did not walk in your Torah's ways. Eishkol asher tzivisa lahem, laseis leyasu, whatever you commanded them to do, they didn't do. Vatakrei yisam eishkol aradas, and because of this, all of these bad things have happened. The ten tribes were exiled, and now Nebuchadnezzar is at the gates of Yerushalayim. Hine hasaylalai, saylalas are mounds. When you besiege a walled city, you build dirt and rock to be able to climb over the wall. That's called sololos. Behold, the ramparts are being built against the city lalachta to conquer it. Vohir nitna biyada kasim, and the city will be delivered to the Babylonians. Olnicham olam neyacherev. And there is the sword and the famine and plague, disease within the city. And everything that you said would happen if we don't do tshuva is happening. This is your meow praying to Hashem. You see Hashem how much we are suffering. So now your meow asks Hashem. Hashem Elikim. You're telling me, now the truth is, why didn't Yermio figure this out, that Hashem is giving a nechama, but Yermio is expressing his frustration. Hashem, everything is falling apart. Yerushalayim is going to be destroyed. And you're telling me to buy a field? When the ear is nitna biyad hakastim, what's the meaning of it? Why do I need a field that's going to be taken away from me? Vayihi devar Hashem el yirmiyo lemer, and Hashem gave an answer. Hine, ani Hashem, elokei kol basar, I am the master of all flesh. Hamimeni yipolei kol do you think anything is impossible for me? You think... I can't reverse all of this Chorban, the all-powerful Babylonian Empire. You think I can't get rid of them? Indeed, they were defeated by the Persians who gave us permission to come back. Yes, you are correct. I am going to deliver this city to the Babylonians and in the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babel. Ubo ha custom and the custom, the custom the Babylonians will come and Alchamalir that are fighting against the city, the Tsisu Asirazis, Baesh Usrafua, they will burn this city, Vesabatim Asher Kitral, Gagaseim Labal, and all of the houses where uh, on the roofs of those houses you brought Korbanais to the Avaida Zara, the Sahu Nisachim Lohim Achirim, and you poured not you, but they, they poured libations of wine to other small g gods, Avaita Zara, Laman Hachiseni, because to get me angry. Hashem says, Yes, I am gonna destroy the city. 
There will be a Chorban. There will be a Galus. There will be Cherev and Dever and Rav. Ki Hayu B'nai Yisrael, because earlier it was the ten tribes, B'nai Yisrael, and now B'nai Yehuda and Binyamin, Ach Eisen Arabi Einai Minurayim, from the beginning of their life, they do evil. Ki B'nai Yisrael, Ach Machisim Aisi, B'maisi Adem No Mashem. They anger me, Kav Yochel, again and again, with all of the Avedah Zorah, which are the creations of their own hands. From the day Yerushalayim was built. And Rashi points out, this is a reference to Shlomo marrying Basparo. From that day, I already declared that unless they do tshuva, this city will be destroyed. I'll call Ra'as b'nei Yisrael b'nei Yehuda sh'rasul achiseini heima the Jewish people, Malchayim, their king, Sarayim, their officers, Kohanayim, their priests, Nubiayim, their false prophets, Ish Yehuda, Yeshve Yerushalayim, Vayifnu Eli, Eirech Panim, they turn their backs to me, the back of their neck, and don't approach me reverentially with Kavayt from the front, when you don't care about somebody, you turn your back to them. And I tried to teach them Musar and Teichacha every day, and they don't listen. Lokachas Musar, to take Teichacha, to take guidance. The Asimu Shikutseyem Babayas Asher Nikra Shmi Alav Latamo. And not only that, but there were times, such as the reign of Menashe, where they literally put their abominations in the Beis Amikdash itself, the house that my name is on. And they built altars to the Canaanite god Baal. Begay Ben Hinnom. Now, Gay Ben Hinnom literally means the valley of Ben Hinnom. This was a valley outside of Yerushalayim uh, in itself. It's just the name of the place. But because this became a place of Avodah Zorah, uh, Bamais for Baal, and they were Mavir, they would pass their children and their sons and daughters to Molech, again a Canaanite god, they would pass their children through fire and burn their children to death. So it's not only of Zara, but the murder of their children, child sacrifice. Because of this, the valley of Ben Hinnom became known as Gehennom, and that was the, the place where one enters the netherworld where Rishonim are punished. But there actually is a valley, Gay Ben Hinnom. I never even thought they would think of such an abomination. And Yehuda was led astray in Averos. So yeah, Hashem says, I am going to have a Chorban and a Golos to purify the Jewish people and to bring them to Tshuva. But Viata Lachain Kayamar Hashem Elokei Yisrael it is true that this very city that will be delivered to the Babylonians through the sword and through the famine and through the plagues that will decimate your population. But that's not forever. That's not the way it's always going to be. Hineni mekapsam. There will come a time. Now again, there's always the problem of short-term, long-term. There will be a return to Zion after 70 years, but that's not a kibbutz goliath of everybody. The ten tribes didn't come back. So Yermio is both referring to what will happen after 70 years and what will happen biacharis ayomim, right? You always have to have those two perspectives. I will gather the Yidden from all of the lands that I have pushed them to with my anger and with my fury and kesef gadol. And I will bring them back to this Makim. And I will cause them to dwell with security. And they will be for me, my nation. And I will be their God that will protect them and take care of them. And I will be their God that will protect them and take care of them. 
Now this is messianic. And when that day comes, they will have one heart and one pathway. They will not go in different ways away from Hashem. Liyira osi, to have reverence for me. Kol hayamim, letov lahem, to be good for them. V'livneyam achareyam, and for all of their children. I will make an eternal covenant. I will never leave them. To give them good. And I will put Yira into their hearts. That they will never turn against me. Now this does raise, once again, I, I tend to uh, raise more questions than answers. That is the simple meaning of the Pasuk. The simple meaning is that in this messianic era we will no longer have the Yetzir Hara to sin or rebel against God. God will put his Yira in our hearts and we will not turn away from him. So the question that one has to explore is, will there be sin in the days of Mashiach? Will there be Bechira in the days of Mashiach? Will there be a Yetzer Hara in the days of Mashiach? There are different sources in Chazal that go in different directions. This particular Pasuk, standing alone, seems to imply there is no Yetzer Hara, there is no sin, there is no Bechira. Our hearts will be inspired with Yeras Hashem. The question is, what is the purpose of a physical world, which Mashiach is, if there is no Bechira? What are you gaining? And why don't we just go straight to Olam Haba? What is the purpose of a physical world without the struggle of the Yetzir Hara? A bit of a Tzorich I leave it as a question to ponder. In Pasuk Memalef, V'sasti alem l'heitiv osam, V'sasti, Hashem says, Kav I will rejoice, I will have simcha, to give good to the Yidin. Because Hashem doesn't enjoy punishing us. He punishes us because we need to be punished. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu feels our pain. But what really gives Hashem Simcha is when He can be mative. I will have Simcha to be mative. And I will plant them in this land with Mamish, very unusual phrase, Hashem is saying, with all of my heart, with all of my nefesh. Ki chai amar Hashem, so says Hashem, kasher evesi asam, el ha'amazel kol harag, as I brought you all of these bad things that are happening to you, kein anoichi mevi alayim, es kol ha'teva, asher anoichi deiver alayim. Yeah, I brought you all the bad stuff that I said I would bring you. But that also means I'll bring you all the good stuff that I said I would bring you. And therefore, Yermio, in answer to your question, what is the purpose of buying a field near Yerushalayim in Anosos if everything is falling apart? Answer? Hashem answers the question. The nikna hasada bi aretzazais. The field is being purchased in this land. Hashir atemomrim. You all say, Shemamahi, it is desolate, forsaken. Meena damu beima. No one's going to live there. There won't even be animals there. Nitna bi adakastim. It's totally given over to the Babylonians. No! My message is, Sadai spakesev yiknu. Fields should be purchased with money. The Kasoba saver Bakasai men make a deed and sign the deed. Why eat them and get witnesses? Biaretz Binyamin in the land of Binyamin Usvi Shalayim and all of the 
all of the environment around Yerushalayim. Are Yehuda, Are Hahar, Are Hashrela. This is including the part of the ten tri- uh, tribes, the mountain country of Ephraim, and the valleys, and the Negev. Why? Because Oshiv Eshivusam Noam Hashem. Because eventually there will be a return. Keep your deed. You will need it.